Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Today we are doing a Procreate video. There's a feature of Procreate and a lot of other drawing apps like Photoshop that I've never really played around with before but I've always kind of wanted to delve into so I actually didn't watch any tutorial videos or read on how to do this before making this video so we're going to kind of struggle through and explore this together. Obviously, you know from the title of this video that we're creating a brush. So this is something that I've seen a lot of artists do and I've seen a lot of artists sell brushes. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, uh, but you can Google it if you want to know. So there are so many options when you are creating a brush. It was a little bit overwhelming. So I kind of, what I did is on the left side you see you have all these tabs, all these options. I kind of just clicked through them changed them, did some random stuff, scribbled a little bit to see if I could figure out what was even happening. I'm going to be completely honest, some of these I don't know what was happening. I don't, like, I just honestly don't know what it was even changing. Um, so, you know, feel free to look that up. Let me know in the comments. Some of these, I, it was really obvious what it was doing. So what I wanted for this one is I wanted to create a simple brush because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I decided I wanted to create a freckle brush because I like the way that freckles look in drawings, but I don't necessarily want to have to draw every single dot of freckles every time I draw them on something. So if I was able to create a freckle brush, I could just use the brush and put freckles on things. I'm pretty sure other artists have made freckle brushes before. So honestly, there are probably some that you could just download or buy if you don't feel like making them, but I wanted to do this for the whole point of making it. Um, so you'll see you have options like size, opacity, pressure, tip, uh, touch taper. The taper was one that I couldn't really figure out what was happening, but for my purposes it didn't seem necessary. So if you go to the shape source, I think that was the one that took me the longest, uh, you're going to start off with just this circle. So if you want something other than a circle, you're going to have to upload a photo of some sort. You can find a texture online, save it to your photos and upload it here. What I ended up doing was I went into Procreate itself and I drew out some freckles, like a little pattern, and then I saved it to my photos as a transparent PNG. And then from there I uploaded it into my shape and it took that and I was able to work off of that drawing that I had done. So you could really do this with anything. Uh, you just have to have an idea for it and you can steal stuff from online, obviously, um, or you could create it yourself from scratch in Procreate or any other drawing app really, uh, as long as you just like save a picture of it. So here I was kind of exploring with that because I, I didn't really know what I was doing again. So I chose a random picture that I had previously drawn and it was like this picture of the cat and it, it was crazy. So this, this is where I actually started drawing the freckles. And for freckles, I, I did actually look up a couple reference photos. I know that seems a little crazy, but you don't want them to be regularly shaped. You don't want perfect little dots. You want some that are bigger, some that are smaller. And they're not going to be perfect circles, they're going to be kind of weird shapes. Some are more oval, some are, look like U's, I don't know. But you have to mix it up, otherwise it doesn't look organic. Also, please ignore all those ugly selfies that you saw. Um, sometimes, you know, you just get bored and you start taking selfies, and sometimes they really don't look great. So, anyway, back to the drawing. Uh, we're just making freckles. And for this, it doesn't really matter what color you use. Um, I stuck to like dark grays and lighter grays because if you noticed, it kind of changed it to a like grayscale anyway. So when I uploaded that original photo of a, of a picture on Instagram that I had, it changed it to grayscale when I put it into the shape editor. 
so you might as well draw it in gray but if you really feel like drawing it in another color say you're working off of a reference and you're seeing it in red so you want to draw it in red you can but it is going to change it to gray scale despite what you do anyway i'm hoping this video isn't too fast to follow along with i um made it two times speed because this video otherwise would have been about half an hour long and sometimes with tutorial videos half an hour is just such a long time 15 minutes is a little more doable but if you really need to you can always slow this down i do recommend though if you are going to create a brush and just click on everything um maybe don't necessarily go in with a specific idea but just go in click on things slide things around and see what you can create and then from there figure out what kind of brush you want to make all right definitely the best way to learn things like this is just to do them i think that's kind of true of art in general though the more you do it the better you get at it you know watch other people do it then you try to do it yourself find what works for you because what works for other people might not work for you so here we have our transparent freckles um, if you notice me going to my home screen every once in a while it's because I wanted to make sure that it was actually screen recording if you were to record in procreate it would not show all of this so i did screen record but i've tried that in the past and for some reason it would like randomly cut out and stop recording so i just checked every once in a while to make sure we were still good so this is where we really get serious i had my freckle design and so here we're trying to figure out how to make it actually look like freckles if i were to draw on somebody's face so if you look at the jitter um i mean it the name makes sense, it's jittery. So it basically just spaces everything out. The more jittery you have, the less jitter, everything closer together. So when you have zero jitter, you're basically creating just lines. With the spacing, it's the spacing of the individual stamp, I guess you could say. So when you had the circles, if you move the spacing out, so if you had a lot of spacing, the circles didn't overlap as much as where if you have zero spacing, they overlap and just create a normal line. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Streamline, um, I don't really know how to explain that. It basically seemed to just like fix your lines for you so that it would create more regular lines if your hand was a little shaky. Fall off, um, that kind of made it more of a damp if you had more fall off and more of just a free fro free flowing thing if you had less i don't know if that makes sense but if you had a lot of fall off you would draw and then after making a very short stroke it would stop drawing versus if you have a lot of fall off or less fall off i mean you can keep drawing um, i don't know if that makes sense but if it does not go in and play with it yourself and it will so if you have a lot of fall off, it basically just becomes like a stamp versus an actual pen. And if you want to clear the little box on the right, all you have to do is click the little image in the top left hand corner of that rightmost box. It kind of looks like a square with a little pencil in it. If you click that, you have an option to change the size of the brush you're working with so you can view it as something larger or smaller. I believe you can also change the color, but I didn't really do that for this video. And you can choose to clear the screen if it's getting too cluttered and there's too much in there. What I really found I had to do in this process was go back and forth between all the tabs that were on the left because some of them affect it in one way and you like that, but then you need to change something else to really make it the way you want it. So you end up going back and forth a lot. So you'll notice here that you have an option for scatter, rotation, count, and count jitter. So the scatter, true to its name, scatters it. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Again, the easiest way to learn what these things do is just to click on them and use them. The rotation I liked because it seemed to rotate the actual like image so that, especially for freckles, you don't want them all to look the same. You don't want it to be super regular. So if it's rotating them, um, it, it creates more irregular shapes, if that makes sense. And then the count jitter is similar to the jitter on the other one before. 
So here we were looking at grain. Um, I'm gonna say this isn't something I played a whole lot with just because for what I was doing I didn't really see much of a difference. So I didn't spend a lot of time here. I just kind of clicked around. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. The depth was interesting. And then here we have like this rotation thing. I don't know. I end, I played with it and then I put it back to where it was before because I just didn't feel the need to change it. Uh, you can also do shape filtering. So I'm not sure exactly what that does. That's again something I didn't play with for this brush. I do hope to make more in the future. So if you have any suggestions or ideas for brushes that you want, let me know. Because I'm trying to think of ideas for some. I think that's the hardest part is once I know what I want the brush to look like, I can probably make it. But if I don't know what I want the brush to do, it's kind of hard to go in and figure that out. Uh, obviously I had an idea this time for freckles, so it was easier to go in and do it. So I'm just going to be completely honest for what I did and if you're beginning out this is your first time making a brush, really the most useful things were the top like three probably tabs on the left. I didn't really do anything with the wet mix or color dynamics or any of that or the rendering. Uh, once you get more advanced I'm sure those are really cool things to play with but in my case I just they didn't seem useful. So maybe I will do some research on what those do and I'll create another video explaining more of that stuff. This was a video of me stumbling through so that you guys can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, but I did not do any research before this video so I'm hoping to do some research, look up some of the technical stuff, what exactly it's doing, and see what we can create in the future. So now it's time to actually test out the brush that I made. And you can name your brush uh, whatever you want. So, you know, feel free to name it. And then also, I just brought up this picture. She is not a finished picture, but something that I was working on just to kind of test this out. So you can find your brushes here. And I don't know, I guess you could put your brush in any category. I didn't, I didn't really play with that. I, I'm assuming you can create a category of like custom brushes, um, which maybe I'll do. I just haven't yet. So I chose this like kind of orangey brown color and then I just kind of went and put some freckles on her. So I did have it so that it is pressure sensitive. So if you press harder, they're a little bit darker. If you press lighter, they're more faded because for freckles, it seems sometimes you have clusters that are really, really dark and then they kind of fade out into other areas. So I wanted to be able to get that effect with this pen. Well, that's it for this video. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.